Let's begin with the data association variable. We have the measurement Z, and the individual measurements are indexed by J, ranging from 1 to MK. The data association for the object with state XI at time K is denoted theta I at time K. And this data association variable is defined just like how we defined the data association variable in single object tracking. So theta I is equal to J, if object I is associated to measurement J, and theta I is equal to zero if an object is undetected. The N object association, theta K, is then defined as a vector that consists of the associations for each individual object, theta one, theta two, and so on until theta N. So we can have a look at an example with some uh, example data associations. We have two objects with states x1 and x2, and two measurements, z1 and z2. One possible association is that the multi-object association theta is equal to the vector with elements one and zero. And this means that the object with state x1 is associated to detection z1, and the object with state x2 is not associated to any measurements. In other words, that object is misdetected. Another possible association when we have two objects and two measurements is the one shown here, the association vector with elements two and one. And for this association, now the object with state x1 is associated to detection z2, and the object with state x2 is associated to detection z1. The set of valid associations, capital theta, is a little bit more complicated in N object tracking compared to single object tracking. For a valid association, we have that two things must hold. The first is that each object must either be detected or misdetected. And this means that theta i must belong to the set of integers from 0, 1, 2, and all the way up to mk. And this must hold for all object indices i. The second is that any pair of detected objects cannot be associated to the same measurement. And uh, we express this mathematically as saying that we have that for all object indices i and i prime, where i is not equal to i prime. If theta i is not equal to zero and theta i prime is not equal to zero, in other words, both those objects are associated to some measurement, then it must necessarily hold that theta i is not equal to theta i prime. So in other words, they cannot be associated to the same measurement. In object tracking, this is part of the point object assumption. The point object assumption is that each measurement originates from a single source, so it's either from one object or from clutter, and the point object assumption also includes that each object can cause at most one detection in each time step. These two requirements, one and two, together they ensure that at most n measurements are associated to the n objects. And in what follows, we're only going to consider valid associations unless we explicitly state that we are talking about invalid associations. Let's have a look at some examples of valid and invalid associations. And again, we will consider a scenario where we have two objects and two measurements. So in this case, there are seven valid associations listed here. In the first one, neither of the objects is detected. In the second and third associations, the first object is detected and the second is misdetected. In the fourth and fifth associations, the first object is misdetected and the second is detected. And finally, in the sixth and seventh associations, both objects are associated to a detection. So here we have given these seven valid associations a numbering one to seven. But you should know that this number does not have a specific meaning. We could equally well have numbered them in a different way. We can also have a look at what some invalid associations are for this example, when we have two objects and two measurements. First, we have two example associations that are invalid because for at least one of the objects, the association does not belong to the set of integers from 0, 1, 2, and up to m. And then we have two example associations that are invalid because the same measurement has been associated to multiple objects. 
Given the measurements Z and the data association theta, the association to object I is either a measurement Z theta I or it's empty. So given theta, we know what OI is. We also know which measurements are included in the clutter. Mathematically, we can express this as the measurements indexed by J such that it does not exist any object index I for which the association theta I is equal to J. And we're also going to express this in a more abbreviated way, J such that it does not exist a theta I equal to J. Lastly, we also know the number of object detections and the number of clutter detections. And here we have denoted them MO and MC. So given a data association theta, MO is simply the number of non-zero entries in the vector theta, and MC is given by M minus MO. So let's consider the example with two objects and two measurements again. In this table, we have listed the seven valid associations, and for each association, you can find what the corresponding association to object with state x1 is, the association to object with state x2. These are denoted capital O1 and capital O2, respectively. You can also see what the set of clutter measurements given the association is. And lastly, you can see for each association how many object detections there are and how many clutter detections there are. So if you would like to study this table closely, you could pause the video now and do so.